Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Microtech LEDT Generation 3. This is the newest version of the LEDT, and it comes with a, a few uh, upgrades and uh, not a bad price tag, honestly. I'll link it right down below, but just keep in mind, this is a new Microtech product and it will come in and out of stock. I can't guarantee it's gonna be in stock, but I'll link some places where you might be able to find it if you check back frequently. It does help my channel and use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Now this is mine, I did pay for it, um, so I just wanna put that out there. Um, but let's go ahead and start off here with some specs. So the overall length of the new LEDT is about eight inches. I believe that that's the same as the old one, but honestly, I don't own an original ADT. I reviewed it a long time ago and I enjoyed it. Um, but uh, I, I think they're honestly about exactly the same overall length. The blade length is about 3.35 inches. Cutting edge is three inches on the dot. How about some size comparisons? Uh, any custom scales in this section you can find down in the description under original goat and others. So up against the 8010 and the 8020.5, much closer to the size of the 8020.5, but still a full size knife at eight inches. Honestly, just looking at this, I would have thought, without remembering the size of the original, I would have thought about it was about seven and three quarter inches, but no, uh, a little little longer than that. So how about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? That's about right in between. And then finally, let's put it up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Hogue Deca. Almost exactly the same overall length as the Ritter Hogue. So there you go. How is the action? So this LUDT actually runs, I don't know if we're gonna be able to see it, but it runs on bearings. I, this is one of those times where I really wish that I had the uh, the original, or at least the Generation 2 LEDT to, f to feel it out, but it does feel very smooth. Does that make it feel like it fires harder? I feel like it probably will continue to fire harder over time as those bearings wear their race uh, into the, the surface that they're on. Um, but as of right now, this just feels like a typical hard-firing American side-opening uh, automatic knife, which, you know, by the way, this is made in the USA. Um, this fires just as hard as like your typical, um, you know, your Protex. I'm not gonna say it fires quite as hard as the Microtech Auto Stitch. That thing fires super hard, or at least the recoil from that super heavy blade is pretty intense. This fires hard. If you hand this to somebody who has no idea, a lot of people who can carry uh, side opening automatic knives legally, you know, you I'm sure you've handed it to that one friend who's like, oh yeah, and then they push the button and it flies out of their hand. Yeah, it's, it's, don't don't hand this to people who don't know because it, it will, right? You gotta tell them, hang on to it because it, it fires hard. More importantly, it fires reliably. There's enough force. Even if I just pull it back slightly, you can see there's always enough force to get it to deploy completely. And these are plunge locks, right? But Microtech always does a good job with their plunge locks. I don't feel like there's ever really a major risk, risk of disengagement unless you're doing something stupid with your knife. So yeah, this gets a pass. You will have to, uh, you know, obviously work against that tension, coil spring tension, uh, to put the blade back into the closed position. But everything feels solid. Nothing feels crunchy or like it wasn't machined properly. It feels if, typical Microtech, just very precision machining. Uh, so the action is very good. Let's go ahead and do carry profile up against uh, thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3. It's just slightly thicker, not really though. Length and height up against the PM2 and Pair 3. Uh, this guy is really about the same, maybe a little, it's actually a little bit longer than Spyderco Pair 3 closed, which is pretty cool. And, you know, it doesn't quite come to the same max height. Really, my care experience with this over the last few days has been pretty positive. I've got a couple of little nitpicks, but overall, it's a pretty easy knife to carry. It just folded up. You just wouldn't expect that this would be an eight inch knife. In fact, I really, I'm going to measure it again because it really just, yeah, it's eight inches. It just really doesn't feel like an eight inch knife, right? Um, so really, uh, yeah, your care experience is going to be probably pretty similar to mine. It's pretty positive. So for materials, of course, we have aircraft aluminum. We have the Tractec 
inserts, I think that's what they call it. Uh, steel pocket clip, and then we have the M390 MK blade, which is, of course, the special blend of M390 that's made specifically for Microtech. I think the composition's slightly different, but for the most part, you probably won't notice much of a difference. I personally have not, um, but that's your, those are your materials there. Then, of course, we have bearings for the uh, pivot. We already talked about that. Let's go ahead and weigh it. I don't think this is an overly heavy knife. In fact, I think it has pretty darn good ratios. Yeah, 3.49 ounces of weight for roughly, I mean, it's very close to a three and a half inch blade. So that's pretty good. Balance on this knife is right, right behind the pivot. So that's very good. It, it really does feel like a lightweight compact knife. Let's move on to the hardware check. That's interesting. Uh, I'll get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use in this channel. Is this a T15? It might actually be a T20. Uh, let's go ahead and check that T20 there. What do we got there, guy? Is that a T20? There we go. Excellent. And then we have a bunch of T8 screws, which I am happy about. I love, actually, let's make sure. Sometimes the fastener head makes the, the, the whole head makes the thing look a lot bigger. I'm sure there's a joke in there somewhere, but I just don't have the, I don't have all the pieces. I'll let you guys put together. T8 for everything else. Now, kind of a lot of hardware. We've got one, two, three screws holding in the back spacer, a couple of T8 screws holding in the pocket clip, which is fine. Curiously, two T8 screws holding in the stop pin up here probably don't need to do that. A lot of times the stop pin is just like, you know, it can be like pinned in place. So it just comes like as the scales come apart, you know, it comes apart. It's how uh, like Hinder Knives does it. Um, but then again, you also have a lot of other companies, I mean, doing it that way too. Do we have, yeah, like uh, right here, the stop pin on the rat. It's screwed in place. It's not that big of a deal. It's two extra screws. I just don't think we really needed them. In any case, I'll take this over minimal hardware, but it's T6 any day. I hate T6, so I'd rather... In fact, go ahead and put another two T8 screws on there. Honestly, I'd still rather have it than T6. I don't really care. We have access to the knife. It's very good. Blade stock thickness, I'm not even going to measure it. It's an eighth of an inch. Uh, I just, uh, you know, refreshed myself with specs um, on the uh, Microtech video just to make sure. Um, but yeah, it's an eighth of an inch on the spine. So let's go ahead and move into the meat and potatoes here. Um, the big difference between this and the last one is the addition of bearings instead of what they had before, which honestly I don't think was even a washer system if it's like the, uh, I've never taken apart the original or the Gen 2 LEDT, but if it's like the Microtech Stitch, it's nothing. <laughs> like there's just nothing. It's just like riding on, I can't remember if it's right on the aluminum surface or what, but in this case we have bearings, right? Um, which are, are running on a hard surface, so that's great. Um, and I personally, I don't have an issue with that. now. You know, in some situations, you know, they say bearings are, are worse with like excess debris. Most of the time, even if that is the case, it's 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 hard for debris to get trapped in there uh, so much that like compressed air won't blow it out. So you might run into a situation, maybe if you work in a really dusty or dirty environment. Nothing that you know. A lot of times, they recommend literally just hot soap and uh, hot water and soap, uh, and then just blow it out with compressed air. Of course. Always consult directly with Microtech to get the details on their warranty before you do anything like that. Um, but blowing your knife out with compressed air most of the time will fix the issue. So I think the bearings addition is is pretty cool. And I, I feel like, again, as they wear their race into the knife, it should just continue to fire harder and harder and harder and smoother and smoother and smoother, right? Um, not an enormous amount. It might be like 10 to 15% over time. But um, yeah. Uh, it's that, and then the overall aesthetic has changed slightly. Now, I like the look of this version better than the old one. There's there's only one issue, really, and it's 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 not really an issue. The pocket clip rides directly on the um, the grippy texture here, and um, it creates a little bit more friction than there would be otherwise, like if it was just a smooth aluminum surface, but there, there is a little bit of friction there. And truthfully, the biggest issue I have is the style and length of the pocket clip. This is entirely too long of a clip for this style of knife. And I know it gives you a tactical grip on your pocket while you're doing parkour and 
defeating enemies much the same as Wolverine might, right? As he's doing acrobatics and other Wolverine-like things. But let's be real. That's not what we're doing with our knives. A simple, shorter pocket clip would do just fine. In and out of the pocket, like I said, a little bit more friction due to the track tech, but really it's because of the bill of the clip. Um, and Well, actually, the bill of the clip's not that bad. It's just that there's two pinch zones, and that it bothers me. And there's quite a ways to travel in and out of the pocket. So I find myself having to hold the pocket with one hand and push the knife in, kind of the same way coming out. A lot of times when there's too much grip coming out, you do this, and the knife comes out of your pocket the moment you slip off of it. I know a few of you have done that as well. That's why I have gripes with certain styles of pocket clips, certain lengths of pocket clip, right? So that bothers me. A couple of times I felt like I was going to lose my grip on it. It's just not the perfect transition in and out of the pocket, but that's not really a deal breaker. I think really the biggest problem is that the clip ends up right in the middle of your hand right here. I mean, truthfully, the ergonomic lines on this knife are okay. Choked up, they're a little bit better. I mean, you have you have enough control to definitely do what you need to do with this knife. It's certainly not bad, but you're going to notice that clip. That clip is right in the middle of your hand, and I don't know about you guys, but it bothers me. Another thing that bothers me slightly is the jimping on this is almost useless. There's very little traction that I'm getting uh, with the jimping here. In fact, the only traction I'm able to get is because it's a ramp, right? Otherwise, I mean, if this was just straight off the spine, not much. I do like that the spine of the blade is crowned. I also like this fuller here that sort of just goes out into the nose of the blade and transitions into nothing. Um, it's rounded enough or bowled out enough that it's very unlikely debris will get trapped in there. There's not like a ledge, right? Um, so that's fine. The The blade itself is extremely slicely, uh, slicely, extremely slicey and extremely utilitarian. Just doing a quick cut test on paper. Oh man, that is a freaking laser beam. That guy is ready to go. Um, that's going to be a really good experience for just your standard cutting tests. Or even, you know, if you got to, I guess, process a bunch of wood all at once or, or thicker, more dense material all at once, yeah, the blade's going to do that. It's going to do a really, really good job. It's not going to win any awards in terms of tip durability or anything like that. But again, you know, just use your head and you should be fine. Unfortunately, Microtech said, yeah, let's go ahead and put that paragraph on the blade. Let's do that. They know that people don't like this. And I can't tell you this is exactly why they do it, um, but I just feel like as someone who has two automatic black Microtech stitches, one with the paragraph and one without the paragraph, uh, the one without the paragraph costs, uh, it was 85 more dollars. I feel like, is that why? So that you can sell us a version without the paragraph? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't like that on here. I, I wish that that wasn't there. Um, you know, they have um, like their right collabs and some of the other, I don't know if it's both right, but some of their newer models just don't have, or, or certain of their older models just don't have the paragraph on there. Um, it doesn't hurt anything, but it's just not pretty to look at, right? So you have the serial number, the date, huge Microtech logo, L Underwater Demolition Team, uh, or LEDT, and then USA. And on the other side, look how much better this looks. I mean, come on, right? You got that on the clip, right? So it says Microtech over here, and in case, like, mid-flip, you're like, oh, wait, I forgot who made it. Oh, that's right, it's Microtech, right? <laughs> we know. God, that's so much stuff, but all right, fine. You know, it's, it's pretty nib. It's, that shouldn't be a reason not to buy the knife, because you're going to enjoy it enough using it that that really won't bother you. And eventually, after you've had the knife for a while, you get over it, right? All the Microtech knives I've ever used that have the paragraph, I look at it, I'm like, that's annoying, and then it's fine afterwards, but I got to point it out. Anyways, we do have a lanyard hole right here, which is fine if you like to attach lanyards. It is out of the way of the clip, which is also fine. This is a right-handed only automatic knife. Perhaps in the future they will create left-handed versions of this knife. I wish that they did offer a style of clip. Obviously, if you flip this over, it's going to be a different direction, even if they did mill it out, um, do the threads for a lefty mounted pocket clip. But I wish they would do a style of clip, much like how they do on the MSI and, and Ramlock Stitch that's symmetrical and, be, and can be flipped over because honestly, I mean, it, it is a, a little bit awkward to deploy this with the index finger as you would if you're left-handed, 
but at least then lefties could carry it. So my only hope is that they make a left-handed version of this knife, right? Where the um, because it's much easier to control the deployment by using your thumb. Your the rest of your fingers are in a better position to hold onto the darn thing, uh, so that it doesn't go flying out of your hand and into somebody's forehead, which is obviously not the most ideal. <laughs> end result um but uh yeah uh, so it's right-handed only and we already talked about the clip it's just a typical micro right, microtech clip right stop pin right here a little bit of shouldering just a little bit um like i said deployment very good plenty of spring tension to keep that thing out uh very smooth very very smooth on the pivot action we have no pivot lash um the I guess, you know, it's it, it's a plunge lock holding it in, but there's no movement down here unless you push it down and it's only slight, right? But it's solid. And the centering is dead on. Really, really nice. Price on this, they technically didn't bump it from the most recent drop of LUDTs, but very, very recently before that, I feel like the LUDT was about 245. So yeah, they kept the price the same has the last batches of Gen 2 LEDT, but it's still a little bit of a price bump. That being said, it's not much more. They want 262 bucks from this up from, you know, the, you know, like I said, most recent drop of LEDT is also about the same price. Actually a little bit more even. Crafty. Uh, 269, now only 262 for the Gen 3. Well, the brat batch before that was about 242, 245. So, is that a big deal? I don't think so. Um, I Honestly, I think that's just fine. This is a great knife. I don't think the price is like, oh my gosh, best deal ever, right? But it's also not bad. Uh, the LUDT, for the most part, has been upgraded. It's just teeny tiny little things. But it's cool and it looks better. Um, this is still one of the better side-opening automatic knives uh, made in the USA on the market. I mean, there's a lot of stuff from ProTech. Kershaw has an incredible lineup of stuff. I mean, truthfully, uh, you know, their, one, their CPM 154 launch series is, is really great. But man, they make a CPM M4 launch 15 for over 100 bucks less. So I'm not upset with this. Microtech does go a little bit further in terms of the overall fit and finish, the overall feeling of quality. Uh, if you handle a lot of these knives side by side, it's very clear that you're getting a little bit more, even if that more doesn't translate to utility, the Microtech does feel like a higher quality product. Is it a hundred dollars higher quality? It's going to be up to the individual. For a lot of people, the answer is going to be no. Uh, but for a lot of people, the answer, yes. I do like this knife and I don't have a huge problem with the price tag. It's just not the most impressive price tag in the world. You know, had this come in at like 225, 230, I'd be like, wow, this is actually pretty awesome. I mean, that would have been a justified increase there uh, over some of Kershaw's stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's okay. Um, I still like this knife and still generally speaking, it is recommendable for people who are, number one, looking for USA side opening automatic knife that is compact and EDC friendly. And number two, can legally own and carry these knives. Check your local laws, right? Metal Complex said I could is not going to hold up <laughs> if the uh, <laughs> if the state you live in doesn't allow you to carry them, right? I promise you that's not going to hold up. So check your local laws. This is a good knife. I like it. I think overall, you know, it's a it's an upgrade. I, I just wish that they would change the paragraph and they would change the clip just a little bit. But yeah, a, a good knife for sure. That's going to be it, guys. Like I said, I'll link places where you can find this knife when it is in stock down in the, the uh, description. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.